Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Malta Haring and I'm going to present to you today the migration booster of Blue Intelligence. Um, I brought with me a small agenda for this tutorial. First of all, we're going to have a little introduction. This means um, we're going to look um, at the migration booster itself, um, in which migration scenarios it's uh, supporting you and uh, how the concept works. So how the migration booster actually acts during a BW for HANA migration um, to migrate your BW data models. Uh, also, I brought with me a migration booster demo. So I prepared a, a small data model, which we are actually going to migrate from an old BW system uh, into a new BW for HANA system. Before we jump into the migration booster, I would like to give you a chance to uh, look at the performance suite one more time. So the migration booster is part of the performance suite, but the suite contains uh, three other products, uh, which I would like to mention here. We have the docu performer for the um, automated uh, creation of uh, documentations of technical developments. We have the system scout for uh, system analysis the migration booster for the your BW for HANA migration work. And we have uh, last but not least the translation steward, uh, which is used to translate BW object descriptions. Um, Docu performer system scout and translation stewards are not going to be part of this tutorial. If you're interested, nevertheless, um, please feel free to contact us. Okay, let's have a look at the migration booster. Um, before I jump into the live demo, I would like you to understand in which migration scenarios the migration booster is especially worthwhile. So using the migration booster um, is worthwhile if you want to use your migration to rebuild your old data models from the old system in the new bw for hana system. Um, this means you don't really want to do a minimum effort one-to-one -one migration of your old data model and simply transfer it to bw for hana so that it works there. Um, you want to use your migration to clean up uh, your old system to, to maybe um, uh, get into new naming conventions in the new system, but you might also want to do some consolidation um, on object level, meaning maybe you want to get rid of some uh, info objects, um, which are um, kind of uh, having duplicates in the old system and you want to consolidate them into just one info object and so on. It's not um, really uh, yeah, um, useful to, to, to use the migration booster if you want, uh, want to migrate your BW for HANA, um, BW on HANA or your old BW models with a one-to-one uh, -one migration where you simply transfer the object types, um, but you keep the complete data flow and all the persistent layers um, as they were. Having that said, um, let's have a bird eye view on the complete concept. So. How does the migration booster work there? Here on the left side, you can see the old BW system or maybe old, uh, multiple uh, old BW systems with the old data models consisting out of the old object types, meaning we have here multi providers, we have info cubes, classic DSOs, and of course, uh, these info providers contain info objects, but uh, on top, um, we also have the reporting uh, elements, meaning queries, reusable key figures, structures, and so on. Uh, and on the right side, we have our BW for HANA system to which we would like to migrate these old data models. And um, it's quite clear here already that the migration booster is acting as the mediator between the old system and the new system. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, import the old objects of our old data model into the tool itself, into a so-called migration booster project. And during this import, there's already a lot of stuff happening. 
For example, we are able to convert the old object types into the new object types at this stage, meaning the multi-provider becomes a composite provider, the cube and uh, classic DSOs become ADSOs, of course, info objects um, stay info objects and queries stay queries for sure. Um, but uh, in general, during the import, the conversion of the object types is happening already. But that's not all that's happening during the import. If you want to rename your objects, meaning giving them a new technical name, uh, then this is also possible at this stage. Um, you can define a so-called renaming list and you can upload this renaming list into your Migration Booster project. And once it's uploaded there, it's valid for every import that is happening. And during the import, the Migration Booster then takes care that your old objects will get a new technical name during the import. And once you have all your objects available in the project, in the tool, um, you have them offline in the tool and you can do some additional work on them. So this means you can change these objects. If we are talking for, uh, about info providers, for example, you will be able to enhance them or to reduce them. This means you can uh, add additional key figures or dimensions. You can remove uh, key figures or dimensions. You can transfer um, info object based info, info providers into field based info providers and so on. And if we are talking about info objects, you will be able to change the technical settings of these info objects. And you will also be able to enhance them uh, with attributes, with compoundings and so on. And once you have finalized your uh, your objects and you prepare them for the new BW for HANA world, then you will be able to export them from the migration booster into the new BW for HANA system. And um, this is uh, the general approach, how it works. And now I would like to show you in a small demo how this actually looks like in the tool. So let's jump into the application. I have the performance suite open already. And as you can see, I'm already in the Migration Booster tab here. This means um, I can see the functionalities here. And what I got to do, first of all, to start my migration is I need to create a project. And the project is this environment where the whole migration takes place and where we define all the rules that are valid for this migration. So let's do this. I'm going to create a new project here. We're going to call it demo tutorial for now. And um, we're going to give it a technical name. We're going to give it a description. And then I have to do the first important settings here. As you can see here um, in the tab SAP parameters, I need to select a source system or multiple source systems from which I would like to migrate my data models. And on the right side here, I need to define the target system to which the migrated data model should go to. And what we're going to do now for the live demo is we're going to migrate old data models from the system BI2. And we're going to migrate them to our BW for HANA system A4H. Um, of course, it's possible to select multiple source and target systems. And what's also possible is you could uh, basically migrate from one system to the same system. Um, meaning I could also migrate old uh, data models from BI2 and then export them later on uh, again into the BI2 system. Um, but what we're going to do for now is we're going to um, migrate from BI2 to A4H. Okay, then I got to set some language settings and these settings actually um, have an impact on what uh, object descriptions I will be able to adjust during the migration. So the language that I select on top here is the language uh, which I will be able to adjust on the fly during the migration. Um, quick example, um, usually in the description of a multi-provider, there is somewhere uh, written multi-provider or something like multi. And since the multi-provider becomes the HANA composite provider, we might want to change the object description for this object. And the language that I'm setting here on the top right is actually the language that I will be able to adjust during the migration. 
and I can t um, simply copy other language descriptions uh, during the process. Um, in this case, I'm going to choose German here and English as an adjustable language. Now I'm almost done setting up my project. What I need to do is I need to load some base objects into the project. Here we are talking about um, um, technical info objects, for example, or time info objects. So very basic, basic stuff. Um, but we are also talking about units, currencies, measure, measure units, and so on. And I got to import them into my project because we are going to handle info objects. And to keep these info objects consistent, I need to make sure that I have all the base objects that they might be based on. That's it. So we have our base objects. We have set the basic um, parameters here. This means I'm able to save my project and to activate it. And this will lead me to the migration um, platform here. So we are now currently in the project itself. And I can see I can select uh, certain object types, but I won't see anything here in the list because we simply haven't migrated anything yet. Um, what I can see here on top, there are plenty, um, uh, plenty functionalities that I can use. So I can decide to import objects into the project. I uh, can export um, objects into the new system. I can copy reporting elements, meaning queries and so on. I can create backups of queries and I can maintain renamings, uh, renaming restrictions and even uh, so-called uh, blacklists. And before I start now to, to import my old data model into the Migration Booster project, I would like to demonstrate to you how the renaming functionality of the Migration Booster works, since this is one of the main advantages that the tool is offering. So um, I have the option to maintain the renamings here, and I can see no renamings have, ma have been maintained yet. But I can see that I'm able to upload a list which is defining uh, how my renamings of the objects will look like. And um, for demonstration purposes, I prepared such a list, uh, which we are going to open now to give you a feeling how this works. So it's quite a simple sheet here. We have four different columns. In column A, we define the old object type, which is going to be renamed. Uh, for example, multi-provider cube characteristic. Then we have column B with the original technical name, so the old technical name. And we have column C for the new technical name that the object should have uh, when migrating. And there's uh, one additional column for the description, which I would like to adjust uh, here again. I can maintain new descriptions. Uh, in this case, for the multi-provider, I remove the multi-provider text in the description. Um, if I'm not setting new description for other objects, it's simply going to copy what's in the old system. So that's fine as well. Um, I'm, uh, this demonstration is now with business content that we are going to move into customer um, into the customer namespace. Um, of course, it's also possible for you to migrate uh, your, your names from your own customer namespace into a new customer namespace. So this is just... Um, convenient for us in the demonstration system that we are renaming the objects from business content into our own customer namespace. And uh, this is basically how it works. So I'm going to give the tool the old name and the new name and the object type. Um, but this is not the only use case that I can um, handle with this renaming list. Um, earlier, I mentioned that it's also possible to uh, do consolidation of objects during the migration process. And the consolidation of objects would also work via this list. This means I could simply say I'm going to rename two um, old objects and I'm going to map them onto the same new object. Um, we could, for example, say that these two objects become the same. Um, so it's not only about renaming, it's actually also about uh, consolidating objects. We're not going to do this for now. Um, I just want you to know that it's possible. Um, so let's close um, this renaming list and let's upload it into our Migration Booster project. Uh, for this, I simply click Upload Renamings here and I'm going to choose the file 
which we have here. And now the tool has uploaded these definitions into my project. And this means that whenever I'm importing now um, my, my, my old objects into the project, these uh, rules are applying and the objects will actually be renamed during the import. And this is what we're going to do now. Um, so let's search for a small BW data model that we would like to migrate. For this, I'm going to open the system scout now, um, who is connected to the BI2 system. And we're going to search for quite a small um, quite a small BW data model that we can use for this demonstration. Um, it's small simply because I don't want the loading times to be too long for you. Um, so let's have a look maybe at the data model below this query here. Um, and let's see what this data model consists of. So we have a query um, that is based on a multi-provider. Um, the multi-provider consumes data out of two different cubes. And we have a classic DSO in the, um, in the acquisition layer. And what I would like to do now is I would like to migrate this. And to do this, I can simply select these objects and can say via the context menu, please collect these objects for my migration booster project. And what I have to do now is I need to select my project, which, which we just created, and I can assign these objects now to the project. This does not mean that I've just imported the objects. I simply, uh, I'm simply using a more convenient way to collect my, um, my info providers, which I would like to migrate. Okay, and we can jump now straight to the project and you will see that the collected objects are available here in a list. And in the next step, I can now uh, import them into my Migration Booster project. To do this, I simply need to select all these um, info providers and I can simply use the drag and drop to um, drop them here in the import area. And before I start the import into the project, I'm simply gonna set two different settings. So I gotta set a level of dependency. This um, defines uh, to which level I would like to also import depending objects. So the multi-provider consists out of cubes. The cubes consist out of info objects. These info objects can have attributes. The attributes can have attributes and so on. I think uh, you see where I'm going with this. So um, uh, we have dependencies up to a certain level. And I can, with this setting, I can simply define to which level I would like to import as well the depending objects. And if I set it to zero, this simply means I'm gonna import all depending objects which are needed to, to build these info providers. Uh, the second setting is simply defining that I want to um, uh, do the object conversion into BW for HANA object types, meaning multi provider becomes composite and cubes and a, a classic DSO become ADSOs. So that's it. Um, since I have already uploaded the renamings, um, the tool knows how to rename these objects now and how to rename also the uh, depending info objects. And I can start the import via clicking here on the top, uh, on the bottom right. And now um, I'm being asked two different questions. Am I sure that I want to import all depending objects? Yes. And do I want to apply the renamings which we just uploaded from the Excel file? Yes. And now the tool uses um, function modules to search for the definitions of the old objects in the old system. And it translates them and migrates them into the new object types. And it's importing the objects into our Migration Booster project. So for now, we are at this step where we selected the info providers that we would like to migrate and we started the import. This means we are importing them into the application. We are not touching the BW for HANA system for now. So everything is still happening between the old system and the migration booster. So now I got the message that the import is finished. So let's jump back to migration booster and we should now be able to see them here in the modeling entity area. And uh, when I select the respective object types, you will see, okay, yeah, we now have our 
old multi provider here, which is now a HANA composite provider. And we have our old classic DSO and the old cubes here, which are now ADSOs. And of course, the migration booster imported depending info objects, which means you will see that we have um, yeah, a variety of info objects, which also um, were renamed, as we can see. So here in the modeling entity area, I can see the old name and the new name at the same time, which is quite convenient if you would like to um, have the overview here. And uh, we also have key figures that were imported and renamed. And what I would like to do now is I would like to show you how you are able to adjust these objects before exporting them into your BW4HANA system. Um, and I would like to show this to you, first of all, on characteristics. So um, on purpose, I left out one um, info object renaming uh, from the Excel list because I would like to demonstrate you that it's also possible to rename objects in the UI itself. So uh, this object here was not renamed on purpose by me and I can now open it via double click. And you see I have so-called modeling uh, tools here so I can change settings, but I would, what I would like to do now is I would like to give it a new technical name. For this, I can simply change the name up here and remove the zero D underscore and replace it with a Z and I can save it. And this leads to um, to a change, not only of the name of this info object, but it also leads to a replacement of the old info object wherever this object was built in, right? So we are going to change the name as well in all the depending info providers and all the depending info objects and so on. So it's quite a, uh, a, a mighty renaming functionality that we have here. Um, me personally, I prefer the renaming via the Excel um, import um, to have the fixed rule set defined, but um, it's also possible to do the renaming after the import as well. Um, let's have a look what we can do about the info providers. Um, I have here a new ADSO, which was previously the classic DSO of the acquisition layer. And uh, I can also open this and see uh, the build up of the ADSO. So it seems to be um, uh, yeah, ADSO with the change lock. So um, the migration booster simply derived the old settings um, and defined them uh, in the bw for hana uh, perspective. And we see that uh, we have plenty of uh, info objects here for the build up of the ADSO. Um, and I would like to use this ADSO for the corp uh, corporate memory layer in the bw for hana world. And usually the corporate memory layer consists out of uh, field-based ADSO since they bring less maintenance effort with them. And now I would like to show you how you can use the migration booster to transform an info object based ADSO into a field based ADSO with just one click. So currently we still have info objects, but if I click here on convert info objects to fields, you will see that um, the migration booster converts all these objects and I can save this. And just by one click, I have a field based ADSO for my new corporate memory layer. It's also possible to, um, yeah, as mentioned, to reduce the build up of a uh, ADSO or to enhance it. So what I can do is I can uh, simply remove, for example, certain um, dimensions or key figures, but I could also enhance um, the, the, the um, structure of the ADSO and drop um, info objects here from, from my imported info objects. So, um, I just want you to know that it's possible to adjust the objects during the migration process, basically on the fly before we are going to export them into the new bw 4 system. Um, so let's keep this uh, as it is for now. Um, regarding composite providers, we still have a chance to enhance the union here. Um, since it was a multi-provider, um, 
It's now a composite provider with a union of two ADSOs, the previous cubes, and uh, it's also possible to enhance this union now. So for composite providers, we have as well um, the possibility to enhance here. Okay, um, let's assume this, these are all the changes I wanted to do before going into the target system. Um, so I have now set everything as I want it to be in the new system. I adjusted my objects and uh, I'm ready to migrate this now into the new BW4HANA system. So I can go to export entities to SAP and I have all my offline objects available here. So my two AD, uh, my three ADSOs and my cube. Let's select them for the app uh, export via drag and drop. And now I have to do some settings before I can export those. Um, meaning I need to set uh, SAP system to which these objects should be exported, uh, which is the A4H. And then I have to define the info area to which the object should be migrated. Um, to simplify this, I'm going to select all info objects and write them into the same info area, which I already created in the target system, which is called Z migration. And we are going to import all the info, provi info providers into the same um, info area. Um, you need to create the info area up front in the target system. So the migration booster does not take care about that. Um, but uh, if you define your structure um, and you have the info areas available, then you can define which object goes to which info area. Um, what's even more important to understand is that I am not able to export these objects now into the target system before I check this export scenario. So the migration booster will always need uh, to check the export as it is defined before it actually starts the export. And this is quite good because this um, prevents us from doing mistakes from, uh, yeah, this prevents us from inconsistencies that could somehow uh, be created in the target system. Um, and you can see it here, I'm not able to click the start export button unless I, um, I, I check the export and this is what we are going to do now. So um, now the tool actually checks if this export is possible as it is defined here. And for some objects, it's gonna tell us that it's not able to export these objects. And the simple reason is, um, we have two examples here. The simple reason is that um, it cannot export these objects because they are already available in the target system. And this is, a uh, very basic thing that um, you need to understand. Uh, the migration booster never overwrites something that's already available in the system. So we are not changing objects which are already there. We are simply um, using whatever is already there to model our um, scenario here. So we have here two uh, info objects which are not um, exportable because they already exist in the BW4HANA system, but this is not a showstopper. We are simply going to use those available in the target system to, um, to migrate uh, this scenario here, to, to model these info providers and these info objects, that's fine. Um, and we have this for yeah, quite a bunch of info objects here, but yeah, as already mentioned, this is not an issue. We are simply reusing whatever is available. And um, the tool itself is happy uh, with our export and uh, we are able to start the export by clicking start. This is what we're going to do now. And we can already see that the tool starts by exporting the info objects into the target system. Makes sense because we need the info objects first to um, then um, model the ADSOs and then we need the ADSOs to model the HANA Composite Provider and uh, the tool completely takes care of this dependency so you don't need to worry about this. Um, so it's now working to create the info objects in the target system uh, and we have a chance to ob observe this now. Um, I have the system connected here. Um, let's go into the English one. 
log on with our VW user. And I have the um, mentioned info area as a favorite here. And we can see that the tool already created the Z and W info objects. So uh, it successfully created uh, the characteristics and the key figures with a new namespace. And um, what it's doing now, it's activating the info objects. Makes sense. So after creating them, they need to be activated. And after we have the active, active version of the info objects, we he can continue now with the ADSOs. And this is what he does. So uh, let's jump back into Eclipse, see if there are new folders now. Let's refresh this and we can see, aha. Uh -huh. So now he created the ADSO and the HANA Composite Provider and he actually is giving us the message that is finished. So the export log looks fine. He skipped uh, quite a few objects because they were available, but nevertheless, he was able to export all the necessary objects. And if we open this HANA Composite for, uh, Provider, for example, now we can see that he perfectly built this scenario. So we have the union um, out of the new ADSOs, the previous cubes, and he did the mapping on his own. He also uh, activated the navigation attributes here um, to have them available for our next step. So what we did now is we exported uh, the info providers and the info objects into the target system. What's missing now is the reporting um, elements. We also would like to migrate the queries and the reusable key figures, the structures that we built and so on. And this is still possible, even though we did a massive change on the structure of the info providers. So please remember, we, um, we renamed the info objects and this means the uh, composite provider consists out of different info objects than the old multi-provider. But nevertheless, we are able to copy now the old queries and to reuse them in our new system. And how this works, I would like to show you in the next step. So let's go back. Let's close these uh, tabs for now. And let's um, see what we need to do next. Um, we have this function copy reporting elements here. This means uh, I can open it. And what I need to do here now is I need to select the query that I would like to migrate. Uh, first of all, the old system where the query resists. And then I can have a look at all the queries in this system. And I can search for my query that I would like to copy now from the multi provider to the new HANA composite provider. Um, I have the detailed information here that it's um, this query is based on our old multi. And on the right side, I'm simply now searching for our new HANA composite provider. Um, and as soon as I have selected the old query and the new compass provider, I can confirm this selection with next. And since the two info providers, the multi and the HANA composite provider are so different, um, this means I somehow need to map the old reporting elements to the new reporting elements. And this is why I get into this mapping um, overview here. So we have our query elements um, of the source query, and we have the query elements of our target query. And the copy of the query does not uh, really work this way. And uh, you, you um, I think you can understand that currently we have um, the old object still in the mapping of the target query. And this is uh, what shouldn't be possible to copy. And this is actually what the tool tells you once you do a consistency check of this mapping that we defined here. So let's do this. Let's um, give the tool a chance to, to, um, to check the consistency of this mapping that is currently defined. And we will um, pretty soon see that the tool is not able to copy this query um, in the way it's defined here because it's missing a variety of objects. So here we can see that he cannot map this to this because the um, old info object is not available anymore in the HANA Compass provider. 
because we renamed certain objects and we are not surprised by this. Um, but the tool is also mentioning that it's um, not able to copy certain display attributes because the base um, info object of the display attribute is not available here. Um, the tool tells us, uh, tells us that it's not able to copy a variable because the base object of the variable is not, is not available. Um, but this is not actually a problem for us. Um, Please remember, we have this renaming list um, in our project, which is basically having all the necessary information to define the mapping of the reporting elements. And um, this is what we are going to do now. So we can simply reuse the renamings that we defined in our Excel list to adjust the mapping of source to target here. And uh, to do this, I can simply click here on Propose Replacement of Technical Names and the tool is going to adjust the entries in the first column here. So now we have the mapping of the old names into the new names uh, on the reporting level and um, I still, I'm still allowed to do some adjustments here. So let's give the query maybe a new name. We're going to call it um, uh, ZNW. Uh, HC01, we're going to rename this, query, uh, this variable here into our new namespace. Let's give the reusable key figures as well a new name based on the info provider. Uh, we're going to do the same here as well, HC01, and this looks good for me. So let's do another consistency check. And yeah, now he is happy he's able to copy um, the query with the de definition of the mapping as we did it here now. So um, it's important to understand that the migration booster adjusts the query definition um, up to the last detail. So uh, it's using the renamings to adjust um, the query definition in the last corner, actually. So we have, uh, for example, um, in here, we have um, in the query a filter on the info object info provider and um, the tool is actually adjusting the filter setting from the old uh, cube name into the new ADSO name. This is just one example, but the tool is also taking care of changing the formula of a calculated key figure, uh, adding the new names there. It's able to um, adjust the selections of restricted key figures um, also using the new objects. This means the tool simply takes care that the query is consistent, even though the new HANA Composer provider consists out of different info objects. This is quite important to understand. So uh, since the tool is now happy with the mapping definition, I can start the creation process of the query and I'm going to get the feedback that everything went fine. Uh, let's uh, prove this, let's check this. So uh, the query is based on this HANA Composite provider. I would like to uh, refresh here and I see, okay, he was able to create the query and the reusable key figures. And if we look into the definition of the query, we will see that is using all the new namings, all the new objects, which we created. And to show you the detail of, um, of the adjustment that's also open for uh, this calculated key figure to see what happened to the formula. And you can see that also here, he used the Z and W and namings uh, info objects to create or to adjust the formula. And also the restrictions of the KM restricted key figure were adjusted and new, new objects were used here. Quite powerful. Okay. Uh, last but not least, I would like to show you how this works if you are not sure if you want to migrate a query at a certain point or not. Um, so we made the experience with our customers that there is always a discussion going on between the business um, and the, the IT. The business usually tends to, to, um, to having m migrate every query that is available, even though they did not use it for five years, they want it to be migrated into the new system. And the IT uh, for sure wants to reduce the effort of the migration project and uh, usually only wants to migrate whatever is necessary. And to kind of uh, 
um, reduce the discussions in this uh, area, uh, we um, developed this so-called backup functionality for query data. So it's possible to simply create backups of certain query definitions um, and to have them available at a later point in time when uh, you decide, okay, I actually need this query um, other than expected. And uh, this means you can uh, refer to the backup that you created. Um, so I'm going to select now two queries for which I would like to create a backup and I'm going to write it into uh, yeah, onto my desktop for now. And I can export now the query definitions and the migration booster is writing that into a file. And if I come to the point now that business was right, they need the query, I can simply use this backup file to copy the query one more time. So let's go back to our copy functionality. And here you will find the option to select uh, a query from a backup file. We can do this now. Let's take uh, the second one and we can now select this backup and uh, we simply gonna use that to copy it to our HANA Composite provider. And at this point of time, the old legacy systems could be turned off. They are not available anymore, but I'm still able to um, to copy the query nevertheless. Um, and of course I can again reuse my renaming definitions to, to, um, to adjust the query definition and I can simply say, okay, please uh, adjust the query name here maybe and the rest can stay as it is. Let's check one more time for consistency and I can start to copy the query and for sure it was able to, to migrate. So uh, this is how the migration process looks uh, like if we are basing the, it on, on a backup file. So um, we now migrated our info providers, our info objects, and of course, the, uh, all the related reporting elements. And I hope you got a good understanding of how this works with the Migration Booster. I hope you enjoyed the session. And um, if you have any questions regarding this, feel free to get back to us. We are happy uh, to help you wherever we can. That's it from my side. Um, enjoy your day and see you soon. Bye bye.